platform launch. Providence platform launch. You know, I want to take that middle word, platform, and then come to the word providence because that's what provides the platform. And then I want to come to the point called launch. I want you to know this, people of God. You know, whenever something is launched, the launching takes place in a few minutes. But the preparation, the platform is laid over years and probably decades. India recently launched a, a satellite into space and they also launched a Mars, you know, research spacecraft into the orbit. For that, even the launch took place so quickly. The preparation, the platform was made over decades or probably, you know, 20, 25 years. They have been working on the platform. The launch was just 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Simple. 10 seconds, boom. And I sense in my spirit, many of us in this place and as a church as well, God was working and working, brick by brick, layer by layer. He was putting together a platform. And before you know, the countdown will begin. And I believe many of you seated here are called for higher purposes. But sometimes, even when you are frustrated, thinking nothing is happening, God was developing the platform to launch you into a next level. So I believe the platform is now being made for a launch to take place. Now, if you understand the word platform, you should never forget the word providence. Now, what is providence? Listen carefully. This is very important. I've spoken about it many years back, but I, the Lord is bringing me back to it. Providence means, it comes from the Latin word providentia, meaning foresight. The two words that are competing with each other. One is plan. How many of you know we, when we come to Canada with a Canadian setting, is that we give a lot of importance and credence to planning. I'm not against planning. We should be planning. We should be people be, that's planning. Planning is something that has become part of our lifestyle. I've never seen such planning until I came here. Every day is planned. Monday is your grocery day. Tuesday is your dishwashing day. <laughs> Wednesday is your cleaning day. Everything has got a day. And I wonder sometimes, and I really have wondered, if the rapture were to take place on the dishwashing day. Would people make it? So we have so much plan. The plan is basically on the understanding that we know something and based on that we plan. Our finances are planned. But let me tell you, providence, providence means that somebody has already planned for you. And then he will you know, move circumstances and slowly move you from here to there and push you there, bring that person in, knock out that guy, remove this guy, bring this circumstance and, and, and open that door. And finally, before you know what has been planned for you, even before you were born, you are in that plan. Come on, hallelujah. That's called providence. That means somebody has already taken up the task of planning your future. Let me tell you with plan, Anything that you can plan, even the height of your imagination, you can only plan according to your ability. I've never planned to become the Prime Minister of Canada. I'm very modest. Because that's beyond my imagination. But let me tell you something. When God plans for you, He's not planning based on your ability. He's planning according to His ability. Come on, hallelujah. <laughs> He's bringing situations together and you are just being brought into that situation. One of the words that you should never forget in terms of this providential move of God is a verse from Philippians chapter 1 and verse number 12. Philippians 1.12. I want everybody to listen to this. But I would, you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened, 
unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. Meaning the good and the bad, the known and the unknown, the things that make sense and the things that don't make sense. When God is in control, all things are working together for the will of God and for the purpose of God in your life. If you believe that, can you give a Lord an agreement in the house of a Lord? He is putting things together in your life. Now listen, people of God, but here is some beautiful truth that I want you to understand. This is so essential. I want to give a personal experience of mine. There are many, but I'll take two or one or two. And then I'll bring some kind of a truth, a revelation that God gave me for today. Listen closely. Take the story of Joseph. Providence was, was very much, I believe it was providence that made him who he became later. Providence. He could have never planned to become the prime minister of Egypt. Even in his wildest imagination, that is beyond the scope of human possibilities. But then God gives him a dream. Now look at the scenario. Look at the scene. Please follow me along. It is interesting. You know, when he goes to his brothers to seek their whereabout, even that was according to the plan of God. And then all the 11 brothers, or 10 of them, decided to kill him. Right there, calling him the dreamer. But listen carefully, if you go home and read those scriptures, one man, Reuben, didn't want him to die. He had this certain sense of, you know, let's save our brothers. He's after all our brother. So he comes with a device. He said, don't kill him, but throw him in the pit. So his idea was to save him afterwards. And then they threw him in the pit. Why didn't they throw him in the pit which was full of water? Why a pit? without water those are questions you have to answer and then I don't know where Reuben went the few minutes that Reuben went away the one guy who wanted to save him maybe he went to the washroom maybe he went to get food somewhere he went got a phone call maybe he just went from that place for a few minutes Judah takes over the second brother. And Judah says, you know what? What's the point of killing this brother of ours? You know, let's not kill him. After all, he's our brother. What a moving word. He's our brother. So let's not kill him, let's sell him. Come on, you have to give it to this guy. What a sentiment. What moving, you know, speech. He's our brother. Our darling brother, let's not kill him, let's sell him. Right at that moment when he said sell him, here comes the Egyptians. Oh no, the Ishmaelites. They're coming. Can you imagine the time frame? Everything happening according to precision of God's timing. And the Ishmaelites, they, 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 they have got this barter system. You know, it's exchange. You give us a commodity, we'll give you something else. So they said, we have one commodity. They asked, where? He's in the pit. Take him, but give us some spices. Good exchange. So when Reuben comes back, his brother is not to be there. He said, what happened? He said, you know what? We sold him. We made some money out of him. 20 silver. And there he goes. Follow the track, please. He goes to Egypt. You know, in Egypt, he was supposed to be taken by some Egyptian. The thousands of merchants standing there to buy the slaves. But it so happened that the head of the department of the king's business, a man by the name Potiphar, decided to buy him. Why out of the thousand merchants that this man was bought by a man connected to the king? God is putting things together. And then, can you imagine one fine day, he becomes prosperous, he becomes the head of that household. And one fine day, when the Bible says, that's something that I can't even understand. The Bible says, you know, when Potiphar's wife was alone and there was nobody in the house, 
Now that doesn't make sense. In a house such as Potiphar's, there will be thousands of servants and maybe hundreds of slaves in that house. How come in that one moment there was none? Even that window of opportunity was created. So Joseph was seduced and he rejected the temptation and here she screams and says, this man tried to destroy me and then finally he's caught. You know what? Because this man was the head of the, the, the Pharaoh's you know, department of prison and all that, they put him in the king's prison or the, the political prison house. He could have been put into any prison but it so happened he was put into the prison where political you know, people went into. The man who has no connection with politics is now put into that prison so that he, he can come in contact with the baker and the butler from the prince, the, from, the, from, the, from the Pharaoh's house. God is working. And finally, you know, one guy's get, uh, two guys get dreams. At the same time, he interprets for them and, and the guy forgets. And finally, after two years, he remembers. He remembers at the very moment when Pharaoh is having a dream. Let me tell you, even forgetfulness and remembering is also connected to him. Are you with me? And so Joseph is brought out. Providence of God moving. And the Lord told me to tell you today, some of you are wondering as to what is happening in your life. But as somebody, you know, dealing with, I'm in a big puzzle. He's moving every block of that puzzle. He's bringing things together. He's putting things together for the future of your life. If you believe that, can you give a Lord a praise in the house of the Lord? He's preparing the platform for a launch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might call it crazy but the one who's doing it is wise hallelujah even the window somebody might ask me what is the difference between miracle and providence i tell you the difference in miracle god suspends the laws of nature and does something for you but in in providence he uses nature and manipulates it Come on, hallelujah. He moves it, he moves it, he moves it. He takes circumstances. He's not creating circumstance. He's taking circumstance and manipulating it for your sake and for your future sake. Somebody know, you need to know, even the fact that you're here today is a purpose of God for your life and for your future. Come on, somebody help me. He is doing this juggling thing. He's moving things around. I'll give you one example. One example. Some people have used, scholars have used the same example. You know, in the time of Ezekiah, the Bible says in Isaiah 37, you know, two things God said. He said, tonight I'm going to do a miracle. And that was a miracle. When the angel of the Lord came down and 185,000 people were slaughtered. Miracle. But then, with the Assyrian king, Sennacherib, right? God said, you know what? I will make him hear a rumor. And he will return to his country. And there he will be killed. So a miracle happens when the angel comes. But for, with the king, it is not a miracle. God made the king think that there was something happening to him. The word, chapter 37 of Isaiah says it very clearly. He heard a rumor that the Ethiopian king is coming after him. Just a rumor. It was a wrong email. It, that email was not meant for him. It went to the wrong person. He hears this rumor which has no base that the Ethiopian king is coming to attack him. And the guy returns to his country where his two sons are waiting to kill him. God arranged the rumors. The Lord tell me, told me to tell you, when I start to move in your life, every pain, every hurt, every word that somebody speaks, every window that is opened, every rejection and forgetfulness and remembering, every mail that you get is connected to a divine purpose of God. If you believe that, can you give a Lord a praise in the house of a Lord? He's controlling situations in your life. 
Let me ask you today, do you believe him as a God who has your future? No, you didn't hear that. Do you believe him as a God who works together all things for your future? If you believe that, can you make it known in the house of the Lord? Can you say nothing is going to happen in my life without the knowledge of my heavenly father? He's working, he's working, he's working, he's working. I've told this in the past, but let me reiterate for those of you who are new here. One beautiful example. Years back, I'm going to a meeting in a place called Rani, a small town in Kerala. I'm the preacher. The bus that took me got delayed, so I'm all in late, tired. Through the night I was traveling. I was in auto rickshaw, three-wheeled uh, taxi in India. So very. F- Some of you need to put your imagination. It's a three-wheel little vehicle, and I'm sitting inside that. It's bumpy road. It's almost 11, 11.30 in the morning. I'm supposed to be on the platform at 11. I'm late. And then on my way, I hear the word Thailand, Thailand, Thailand. That was a prophecy that God had given me years back, Thailand. I don't know why in the world that prophecy has been reminded to me at that very instant I'm traveling in this, in this taxi. I didn't know why. But you know what? I wanted to know This small town is not neighboring Thailand. It's two different places. And I go there, I told the pastor, Pastor, I preach in the evening, I'm tired. You know, and I was was feeling, you know, a bit weary. The pastor, Pastor, please come and show your face. At those people I've been uh, come expecting, they knew that you're coming. and And they're singing for the last two hours. They said, keep, let's sing one more song. The preacher is on his way. And so at least show your face for the sake that they will come in the evening. So I got on the platform. I was sitting on the chair. I closed my eyes. Didn't know what to preach. And a word comes before me. Surely. I can never forget that day. And let me tell you, when I'm saying this testimony, there are people right now seated in this place who are connected to that church. The word surely. And, 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 and I got up to preach. I couldn't shake off. I closed my eyes. Surely. Surely, I can't remove that name from me. Surely, it's coming. I said, this surely is troubling me. Who is this surely? I said, God, what are you trying to tell me? The Lord showed me where she's sitting. I still remember, I said, surely was sitting there. Stand up. And it's so interesting, I pointed my finger on Shirley's face. It was Shirley. Shirley. I called her to the friend. I said, are you ready to receive the power of God? I've never seen such a manifestation of God's power until then. I stretched my hand towards her. She didn't go down. She went up. Literally went up under the power of the Lord. And she fell down in some place. And by this time, people were seated there. They ran outside. Because they have to make way for her. And then we saw she was about to take off again. We don't know where the landing is going to be next. And let me tell you, the power of God was so mighty upon her. And after a meeting, she came and told me, I am surely from Thailand. She said, we have been praying for the revival of Thailand for many years. Would you come to Thailand? Oh. My father is the vice chairman, vice chancellor of the University of Thailand. He can make all the arrangements. I said, sister, today morning, I heard the Lord say Thailand. And no wonder God didn't give me any other name but the name of Shirley. She is the one from Thailand. And let me tell you, before you know, Jareen and myself, we were able to go to Thailand and Bangkok newspaper had this huge heading, Revival in Thailand. You know what? It's a British church, the range of our meetings. We had vacation and we had good move of the Lord in that place. What am I trying to say? In order to take me to Thailand, he brings me to a place called Rani and brings a girl from Thailand to be in that place and gives me one name and through that, come on, how many of you believe God is laying up... If you believe right now what is happening in your life, he's putting a platform for your future. If you believe that, can you shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord? He's putting it together. But not just that. It's not big things, even small things. I've told this before, but let me say it. It's such a beautiful story for my life. You know, traveling to Africa once. In those days, I used to carry money in my wallet as much as I can. 
you know, I think I had about thousand five hundred, thousand six hundred, two thousand dollars in my wallet, and I, 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 I'm, I'm just going to, 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 to Africa. You know, today I don't carry much money, so don't come after my wallet. I'm carrying so much money, and I, I, I went to this Chicago, one of the biggest airports, O'Hare Airport, and I'm in that. I went to the washroom and the stall, and there was a small platform. I took my wallet there and put it on the platform. You know, I came out of the stall, and I'm going back to the, to the, to the gate. And let me tell you, as I'm walking, I saw this sign, salads. Let me tell you, until then, I was not of, found of salads. I never ate salad. I thought that is only meant for, you know, cow, cows and human beings eat non-vegetarian. Come on. We feed on steak and not in salad. Salad is not my popular food item. But something was drawing me. That day, a desire to eat salad. Never before had that desire. I walked to the place. I said, can you give me a one bowl of salad? They said, perfect. They put the salad together. And then, no wallet. Hallelujah. I ran back. You know, there are thousands of people coming in and going. And let me tell you, when I walked in, all the stalls are occupied, except for the one that I went. Nobody there. And my wallet is sitting there. And it's like the money calling me, come, come get me. Come on, hallelujah. It was so vivid. But if God had not given me the desire to have salad, I would have lost that wallet and my money. Let me tell you, he, oh, come on, somebody. We are talking about a... <clears throat> Do you want to have a lifestyle where everything in your life is planned by the Lord? If you believe that, can you give the Lord a shout of praise in the house of the Lord? He controls your future. Everything is happening because of a plan. I'm here today because God had a plan. I never even knew where Alberta was. It was providence. It was God bringing things together. And I want to say today, the Lord is speaking to somebody. How many of you trust your heavenly father? You didn't hear that. How many of you believe he who hung the stars in the galaxy, he who holds the universe in his hands, he is the one who holds my future. If you believe that, can you give a Lord? Come on, give a Lord a praise in the house of the Lord. He holds your future. He's holding it. I want to go into different stories. But let me say this, people of God. Even an email can change your life. He's working. You know, some of you have got divine prophecies. God has spoken to you. And I sense in my spirit, in the next few days, He's going to manipulate People that you never met will come. Contacts will be given. Connections will happen. Phone calls at odd hours will come. And your life is going to be moved to a miracle in the name of Jesus. If you believe God can orchestrate that, can you give a Lord a praise in advance in the name of Jesus? He is going to work in your life in the next few days. I'll give you one example from the Bible and then I'm going to pray for you. I'll give you this example. Paul, the apostle, had a clear word from God. He calls it the will of God that is going to go to Rome. See, when God says a prophecy to us, I'm going to send you to Rome, what do we expect? We expect tomorrow morning somebody coming to our door and saying, Are you, are you so and so? Yes. Do you know who, we, who I am? I hope you're not from the Jehovah Witness. No, no, no. I, I, I came to give you this ticket. You're flying to Rome. Wow. Angels on high, I heard. Singing Gloria. Gloria. I heard the angels sing Gloria. You know, such a beautiful, just like the birth of Jesus. That's not the way he does the miracle. If he wants, it to say, he wants to send you to Rome, he might send you to Toronto. Forget Toronto, Grand Prairie. If he wants to send you to 
in a room, he might take you to a place called, you don't even know the name, in Africa. So what happened? Paul gets his word. He's going to go to Rome. Just after he got the word, he gets arrested in Jerusalem. How many of you know Jerusalem and Rome are not neighboring place? Two ends of the spectrum. He gets his word and he's arrested. And that night they wanted to kill him. Hmm, talk about Rome. Forty people made a vow before God, before the high priest. Before tomorrow begins or before the day is end, ending, we will kill this man. We make a vow and we will not eat or drink until this has happened. Can you imagine God says, Rome, arrest in Jerusalem, and that night is going to be killed by 40 people who have made a vow that they will not eat or drink. And they've got the permission of the high priest. How can this go together? God gives you a word and the opposite is happening on the other side. But from that opposite, God is working. As they were planning this 40 people, you know what? This is a discreet meeting. I don't know how it happened. Paul's sister's son suddenly for no reason happened to be there when they're making this secret meeting or when they're having the secret meeting and making this decision to kill Paul. How can you imagine how come Paul's sister's son happened to be in the place where they're discussing about Paul? Your God is big. Can you imagine somebody is discussing to kill me in a foreign land and my brother is sitting there listening to their plans. How in the world that will happen? That night the Lord told him, they will not kill you. I will take you to Rome. And from there, because this happened, somebody comes and tells Paul. Paul says, go and tell the, the commander in chief or commander of the army. And the army gives him an escort to go to Caesarea. 200 soldiers, 200 spearmen, and 70 horses. Now Paul, instead of being a prisoner, is now a dignitary. Can you imagine 200 police officers, 200 soldiers, and 270 horses? This man is now treated as a big guy. One night, God is turning things around. And let me tell you, he goes to Caesarea, and there, the Roman you know, judge judges him, he appeals to Caesar, and before you know, he's on the ship to Rome. When God said Rome, the journey begins in Jerusalem. The Lord tells me to tell you, some of your prophecies, it might look so distant, but God has already started. Come on, if you believe God can put things together, work on your behalf, can you make a sound that's going to disturb the powers of darkness this afternoon? Come on, hallelujah. God is working on your behalf. He's bringing things together. He's arranging every situation in your life so that the prophecy can be fulfilled. Get ready. I want to speak over you prophetically before I end the service. Right now, your promise is Rome, according to the will of God. And you're praying about it. So was Paul. But now you're arrested in Jerusalem. That seems to be your life. But God says, from that arrest, I'm going to make a bridge. That'll connect you to the fulfillment of your promise. But this is not for everybody. How many of you can declare like Paul, all that happened in my life was for his purpose? Come on, if you really believe that, can you make it known? Can you re rejoice in a God that has your future if you believe that? Can you make itself known in the house of the Lord? Your God holds your future. He holds your destiny. He holds your family. Everything is in his hands. But I'm going to pray for you tonight. Oh, beautiful. 
You may ask me why, Pastor Anderson, did you choose to preach on this? But I'll tell you what the Lord told me. He told me specifically today. I'm going to open a season of providence in the next few days in the lives of people even if it seems strange even if it seems so distant I'm going to bring situations together in order to fulfill what I've spoken over your life if you believe God can do it if you believe he's able to do it if you believe he's about to do it can you give a Lord an agreement in the house of a Lord he is about come on Come on, rejoice in the presence of the Lord. He is able to do it. He is going to bring situations together and do the miracle that you're expecting Him to do in your life. He is going to bring alterations. Every day, it might look, the, the Lord told me, you know what? Miracle, the difference between miracle and providence. Miracle is too obvious. But providence is not. You can miss providence because it looks like everyday, everyday situation. But God is working behind the scene. Some of you are expecting a miracle. But how many of you are willing to say, God, even when I don't see it, I'm going to praise you because I know you're working behind the scene. Come on, if you believe that. Can, can I hear the voice of people who believe the Heavenly Father rejoice in the presence of the Lord even if I don't see a miracle? God, I believe you're working behind the scene. You're working behind the situation. Lord, I thank you. You hold my future. But the Lord told me something which I've never heard before. I want to tread very carefully. I don't know if this is even true, but it will be true because God said it. I want to qualify that by saying most of the time. Listen to me for the next five minutes. He said to me this. While in the formation of the platform, if what is happening to you is prominent, it is very visible. While the formation of the platform is taking place, most often than not, you are just there to be the platform and somebody else is going to be launched. He will give you some visibility while the platform is being made. But the final product is not you. Something to do with his kingdom. Two cases. Joseph how many of you know it was the formation that we know about him? The pit, the jail. But after he became the prime minister, what do you know about him? Not much. Because he was there sent to become the platform so that Israel can be launched. And the prophecy that God spoke to Abraham that your children will serve in Egypt, will be in slavery for 400 years, must be fulfilled. For that prophecy given to somebody else, God uses Joseph as a platform. Ruth, with all the, 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 the colorful events that happened in her life, let me tell you, the product was not her. Because after she got boys, nobody knows what happened to her. I really want to know at this one day how she behaved with boys. What was like a family life? Nothing. Because she became a platform not for her. That she will become the great grandmother. She is there to produce a lineage. She is there to bring forth a line that will lead to the Messiah. That will be connected to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The Lord told me as much as your preparation time, the platform time is very visible. It has got most of the time connected to somebody else. You know Joseph at the end, you know what he said to his brothers? You didn't do this. God made this to happen. 
in order that I can preserve you. What a contradiction. You tried to kill me, but God used that to preserve you. You tried to kill me, and today I'm preserving you. The Lord told me to tell you, everybody that went through pain, when God reveals a launch, it will not be pain which is going to be the end result. It is going to be life. It is going to be salvation. It's going to be the... Come on, somebody give the Lord a praise. It will be the blessings of nations. The Lord told me to tell you this. But if the preparation is happening invisible, even the preparation... In the preparation, you don't even know, nobody knows what's happening. Most of the time, if such a person exists, that platform is to launch you. Jesus, 30 years, nobody knows what happened to him. But brick by brick, he was being made the platform. It was to launch him. Paul, Three years after his conversion, he went to Jerusalem that we know, but they didn't receive him from what we understand. So he goes back to Tarsus from where he came from. And then he finds a man by the name Barnabas who brings him in. And then instead of being in Jerusalem, he goes to Antioch, which became his launching pad. But then three years he was in Arabia. Nobody knows what happened to him. The Lord told me, if the preparation and the platform is held invisible. Remember the person for whom or through whom this platform is being made will himself be launched, will be lifted, will be made visible. Some of you are wondering, God, nobody knows the path that I'm going through. God says, get ready. In the next few days, through the platform that you made, that I made through you, I'm going to launch you. I'm going to launch your family. If you believe God is a God who will launch, can I get a witness in the house of the Lord today? I'm going to launch, I'm going to launch, I'm going to launch your children, I'm going to launch your family. Come on, give the Lord a praise in the house of the Lord. If the platform itself is invisible, It's just like recently India made that rocket. But they made that rocket in order to, they, they're using that rocket to send spacecrafts from other nations. The platform is India's, but the satellites that are going are coming from Korea and other countries. The Lord told me either your life will become a platform where you did your work and you disappear. But God's plan. Or you did your work and God will launch you. How many of you want to say, God, if it is for your kingdom and I disappear, or you want to launch me, let your plan be done in my life. If you believe that, can you give a Lord an agreement in the house of a Lord? Your life is precious to him. I'm going to pray. Some of you seated here are becoming platforms, not for your sake, to launch the next revival, to launch somebody through you. Keep praying, keep praying. Platforms, but connected to others' blessings, connected to blessing for others. But some of you, nobody knows you, you even exist, but he was preparing you as a platform. 30 years, 5 years. But before you know, you will be placed on the platform and launched. How many of you want to say, God, whether it is for somebody else for your kingdom's sake or to bring me out for your kingdom's sake, please, the next few days, everything that happens in my life, be connected. If that's your hunger, if that's your desire, and I want to give you a word. Why do you think God gave me this word? You know, two prophets. Recently, there was a man from 
Kansas, who came for the funeral of Pastor Danes' mother. After the funeral, five minutes, he stood with me. And he said, Pastor Anderson, the Lord gave me a vision for you and for your church. And this is a vision for our church. God is going to make this church visible. For the last 10 years, this church is becoming a platform. Nobody even knows that this church exists. But the Lord told me in the next few days, nations will be la launched from this platform. And this church itself will be launched in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, give the Lord a praise in the house of the Lord. The time is come. And two days back, a prophet from India said, Pastor, I see a vision. There was a huge tree covering your church. Nobody could see your church, but the hand of God came and cut that tree off. And now your church is becoming visible. Visible. And the Lord told me, get ready in the next few days, supernatural providence. If you want providence in your life, can you stand up wherever you are? Come on, give the Lord a praise while you're standing. Give the Lord a praise while you're standing. Give the Lord a praise while you're standing. Everything is going to happen according to a plan of God. Get, get ready, get ready, get ready. Just receive it. I don't have much strength to speak, but I'm going to give everything that I have. The Lord says some of your destiny was so big. But behind the scene, he's working. You expected a sudden miracle, but he was correlating, coordinating circumstances in your life. But today, as a servant of the living God, I will not speak until, until the Lord speaks to me. He said to me very clearly, tell my people the season of providence is kicking in. If you want that to happen in your life, meaning even a phone call, a contact, an email will be controlled. The people that come to you will be controlled. Come on, God is going to arrange everything in such a way. The time frame, the window of opportunity, the words that people speak, the desires of people, everything is going to be correlated. And finally, you will make a statement. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. If you believe that, come on, can you give a Lord who holds your future a praise in the house of a Lord? Give him a praise. He's working behind the scene. Let's pray. Can I ask everybody to lift up your hand if you believe? It may not be a miracle. You're expecting your ticket. You're expecting somebody to walk into your room miraculously like at the time when the angels sang at the birth of Jesus. But maybe that's not the way God is working. He is doing things. You're expecting your Rome, but the work has started in Jerusalem. In that mundane office of yours, in that bedroom of yours, God has started working. Come on, hallelujah. If you believe he is working on your behalf, can you make the devil tremble today in the name of Jesus by a praise coming out of your mouth? Come on, hallelujah. Let there be a shout of praise in the house of the Lord. He is working on your behalf. Behind the door, he is working. But the Lord tells me today three things. And with that, we are going to pray. Number one, do you want to become the platform? If you want to become the platform, every circumstance, every incident in your life is going to put it together. The good and the bad. Some of the things that you call good might not be good at the end. Some of the things that you call bad might not be bad after all at the end. Because in the grand scheme of things, some of the things that you thought were absolutely insensible, God says, I'm working it together. I'm putting it together for your sake. Come on, hallelujah. Can you trust your God as a chief architect? 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you a question. Can you trust your God as a chief architect of your life? Can you believe all that which he does is for your good? Do you believe he's a wise master planner? If you believe that, give the Lord a praise in the house of the Lord. Come on, hallelujah. He holds your future. Number two, do you believe when he makes your platform, maybe he used you as a platform in order to bring somebody in. Just like John, with all the anointing that he had, was had, had only one assignment, prepare the way. He became a platform for Jesus. If God is calling you with all the struggle that you went through for the sake of his kingdom, that you will disappear and he will be glorified. Do you still want to be the platform of God? Come on, can I get a witness in the house of the Lord? Do you still want to be a platform for God in the name of Jesus? Or God says, son, in the time of your preparation, I didn't even let people see you. You were hidden, invisible. I kept you in my closet. But the time would come on the platform that I made through you, that your life has become. I'm going to launch you. If you want that to happen, can you give the Lord? Because that's going to happen the next few months. Ministries will be launched. Miracles will be launched. Purpose of God will be launched. If you really believe that, because while you're praising God, something is happening in the supernatural. Give a Lord a thunderous praise in the house of a Lord. Something, a launching is happening in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for what you have done. For this beautiful word from you. Lord, in spite of my health condition, you gave me the grace to speak. Lord, your words came with power. Thank you for giving me the energy to speak. I speak by faith. The next few days, providence will begin. Circumstances will come together. I believe long things will take place. In Jesus' name, everybody says.